big run results are in everyone and i hope everyone got as close to as possible to the badges and decorations they wanted to get during this event but most importantly i hope you had fun with big run it's such a big deal that Sam and Ra got an event like this, and the fact that it pulled so many people into this game mode gives us a chance that Nintendo might do even more with Sam and Run in the future. What's even more mind-blowing is the fact that the competitive nature of the event they made to get as many golden eggs as possible during your shifts actually made overfishing very popular during the weekend and brought in tons of new players interested in learning the ropes of overfishing in hopes of getting these rewards. The results are roughly where I expected them to be. My predictions were actually around 90x for 50%, 110x for 20% and 140x for 5%. So I'm quite surprised really to see them this close and once again makes me proud and happy that Salmon Run got the attention it deserves. Sadly, not everyone feels that way and there's already been talks about Big Run not being fair, which I absolutely disagree with, so let's talk about that a bit in this chill video. Now first of all, if you didn't get your badge, don't be sad as there will be a new opportunity next time and everyone can prepare for it, especially now that you know what overfishing is, but two days ago, no one even knew what it means. Now, if you're wondering why these scores are where they are, there are multiple aspects to it, but the most important part is that the higher rank you are in Salmon Run, the more bosses spawn and faster, and so more golden eggs will be available to your team. So immediately, Professional Plus 2 to Executive VP players have that advantage, but at the price of having to play much harder games too in comparison. In my experience as a high executive VP player, freelance teams were reliably pulling 110 plus eggs on every victory if they cared to lure, which somewhat sums up why the top 20% is around 113 eggs, as the last voting we have done on this channel with 18,000 people also showed roughly 20 to 30% of my viewers are in executive VP ranks, and the game's overall population is probably more under that, around 15% or even less if I had to guess. As an example of how this works, to just win your matches around Executive VP 700, you have to complete a quota of around 30 Golden Eggs per wave, so with a simple match, you can see that's already a 90 Golden Eggs shift, and going above the quota is also expected, so you already have yourself those 110 average matches. But even if you think with professional and low executive VP quotas, they are around the low 20s and if players really are pushing for higher score because of the competition of big run, you'll see players reliably get above 100 as their high score on these ranks. Not to mention Wahoo World was a surprisingly amazing map for getting more golden eggs and I wish it stayed for salmon run. If you scored under on these ranks, likely you didn't use luring that I talk about all the time and snatcher optimization that is vital in order to increase your golden egg scores. Either way, that's where the 20% is coming from, I would say. That's just the general population balance of the Salmon Run community. That's not even tryharding, that's just people playing normally. Now for the 5%, it also makes sense, despite so many people panicking, it's going to be around 180 to 200 golden eggs, which was never going to happen, let's be honest here. Salmon Run is overall still a very niche mode in Splatoon where PvP is massively dominating, and expecting that a large percentage such as 5% of the community just magically jumps out of the pot and all pull golden egg scores of 180 plus out of nowhere, using overfishing and techniques 99% of the community didn't even hear about before Big Run Weekend was heavily exaggerated. Those numbers are more like less than 1% of the community, maybe even less, as there is a lot of skill involved or incredibly good RNG, especially during random weapons rotation, or both. So first to get it out of the way, let's talk about the popular 200 plus egg pictures and overfishers. These people are like the 0.1% of even the Salmon Run community, which is a small percentage of Splatoon 3. The players who have been pushing the game mode to the limits even before it got popular, and to even remotely measure their skills that everyone can understand, they are the players who reach Executive VP 999 without a single loss every single rotation every two days in like 4-5 to five hours without a sweat. They have teams and such incredible synergy that most of us can't even imagine right now for Salmon Run, so expecting those scores and being on that level, if anything, is a bit arrogant. Give these people the credit they deserve because they are amazing. Now to instead talk about the general high-end players and the actual 5% of Salmon Run, the high scores range anywhere from 140 to around 190. And at this point, every single bonus golden egg gathering is exponentially harder, which is why the top 5% got stuck around 137. 
Fighting for every single egg above around 140 is a tooth and nail fight and heavy optimization where the goal is no longer to just get by but actually manipulate and strategize in the game so that you have time to collect more eggs. I think it's also fair to say and I won't offend anyone that during big run this also meant insane RNG for most of us. And skill comes into play when you finally get that RNG and whether you can make it count. Use all the strategies you practiced perfectly without making any mistakes and go for that high score. In Salmon Run normally it matters a lot what kind of waves you get, whether they are normal day waves or special night waves such as Tornado or Gushers, which had been disabled for Big Run, probably Nintendo did it to make the challenge a bit harder. It also matters whether it's low tide or high tide, fog wave, mothership wave, etc. And since Big Run was an all random rotation, it wasn't enough to get a good combination of waves. You had to also have a good combination of weapons and not end up like my team in the last hour of getting two dynamo rollers, a flingsa roller and a snipe rider and have only fly fishes and steel spawn for the whole map. And yes, above all, this boss RNG also matters. What kind of salmon it spawned, whether you got more moths and scrappers or you got a bunch of flyfish, big shots and stingers that are static bosses and not possible to lure closer for easy golden eggs. It matters a ton. So at this point we are aiming for the perfect RNG to happen, otherwise you were likely stuck around with 120 golden eggs shifts I would say if I'm correct. So the waiting continues for the perfect shift, preferably with a good team that can also make use of this situation. And it would look something like a high tide mothership wave, a high tide fog wave with good goldy eggs, and maybe another high tide wave. Not the absolute perfect RNG, but a very good opportunity to score high that you might never even see. I've only seen high tide mothership as an example once in the whole weekend, and I was playing 11 hours a day. Getting these waves is important as especially high tide mothership and fog wave gives you an incredible density of golden eggs drop for the stage and allows you to collect some insane amount of eggs. And the best I've seen was from Marty showing a picture of 100 golden eggs from a single mothership wave. Same goes for fog waves. If you manage to handle a good high tide fog wave, it is not uncommon to get 70 to 80 golden eggs from just the wave alone and then you just have to pray for the other two waves to be manageable and also good. Now this might sound like it's all RNG but as I said this is where real skill comes into play that is not luck. To make use of the perfect waves that one time finally happens which can be incredibly hard. But these are for the very very top scores of big run and overfishing and I don't want to get too deep into it but hopefully more players will be interested in this area of salmon run from now on and I'll also cover a lot more of it in that case and I can't recommend the overfishing community enough that's already established and is linked in the description. So overall to get those really high scores above 150 golden eggs you had to put in the time and effort along with a good deal of RNG. But I would say if you truly are the top 5% of the community and you're being honest about it to yourself, I think that 138 golden eggs is a very generous and good position for the leaderboard to stop at. Remember if you missed any of the rewards they did say there will be a next chance to get it at the next big run. And again, since most of you didn't even know about the idea of going for more golden eggs than actually needed, I wouldn't be too frustrated about my scores during the first big run. Instead, if you enjoyed it and you'd like to get better, it's time to make overfishing popular and start practicing for the next time. I just wanted to share my opinions and clear the air around the final results of big run, whether they are fair or not, and I hope it also explains why the numbers are where they are for all of you too. I really hope many enjoyed Big Run and I also got so much support during this event for my content that I'm really grateful for and will continue to do my best moving on so we can all be prepared for the next event together. Thank you for watching everyone, well done co-workers, and now we can all take a rest.